there, I'm Ryan, and today we are going to work on an acrylic landscape lesson. All of the tools and materials will be listed in the video description, and if you'd like help with the drawing process, I'll have the traceable up over on Patreon, along with the reference photo for color matching. With that said, let's jump into it. So we're going to begin here today with the one inch flat headed brush and I'm going to be using this because you can fit a lot of paint on the head of it and it has a nice sharp edge for working around our rocks. Now before we actually grab any pigment, we're going to dip the bottom third of our brush right here in some water. This is going to condense all of our bristles, it's going to keep our paint wet for a longer period of time which is important when we're working on larger skies. and. As you can see, we are wiping off the excess because we do want it to just be damp, not wet. Now, when we look at our palette, we have a Mars black, a titanium white, ultramarine blue, a primary red, and a cadmium red light hue. We're going to use this one as our warmer red, we're going to use that one as our cooler red, and we're going to begin in the sky in the background with this large brush. So I'm going to begin here today by grabbing some of our ultramarine blue, moving that down here on our palette. Then I'll grab some of our primary red because it's a cooler red and it'll mix better with the blue, making more of a purple than the cadmium red light hue would. So I really like that. It's really beautiful, but I think it could be a little bit brighter and a little bit less saturated to begin with. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of titanium white. This is going to thicken the pigment it's going to desaturate it, and it's going to brighten it. And there, we have a great first color. So I'm going to start by applying this to our sky here, and I will be painting over my drawing, my clouds, all of that. It is okay, we can go back and just reincorporate them a little bit later on. Drawing them initially does help us solidify where everything's going to be and just kind of get set up and ready and redrawing them would just be great practice, gives us an opportunity to fix anything if we want to change anything. And here I'm going in and I'm mixing significantly more pigment than I did initially. I always like to start with a little bit just to test my colors, make sure I'm actually mixing what I want to, and then once I'm sure, then we go back into it. You can see that I'm using a very long horizontal stroke I try not to kind of stop in the middle of the sky, otherwise you're left with these little markings, which are very noticeable when the pigment is still quite thin and you're working with your first layer. We are going to do multiple layers here in the sky, by the way. When we work with water, we do extend the wet life of our paint. We allow it to spread a lot farther, but we also thin it out a little bit. And that definitely means that we should be incorporating multiple layers really building it up just like we're doing here. Now here you can see that I am stopping in the sky a couple of times just to move that paint about, but then once I'm done, we go all the way across. And when I'm going across like that, I'm also using very little pressure with my brush. The more pressure you add, generally, the more streaky it's going to look. So I like to be careful, and I like to just take it really Really easy. You can see that I'm also working with some speed here. I'm not really taking long breaks. I'm trying to catch that paint before it dries. And if it does, we do have a couple of options. We can paint with more of a wet into dry technique, which I'm sure we will cover later in the lesson. Or you can just go over the sky again. Generally, just going over the sky again is the easier way of going about it. I do that all the time. And the extra layers of paint, honestly, just, they make it look better. You have more of an opportunity to tweak things, make them the way you want. As we get lower here, I'm going to start interjecting more titanium white into the mixture, making it a bit brighter. We are getting closer to that sunset. And I don't want a hard line of light pink here, so I'm going to move up like that bit of an X-shaped pattern, so I get that full transition, and then I smooth it out horizontally yet again. Going back to my palette, 
grabbing some extra water, more titanium white. I think we could use a little bit more red and blue. We may have added slightly too much titanium white, and that will happen. Don't worry about it. You can always just go back and interject more color. Looking really pretty though, so far. I like this a lot. And if you look at the reference photo, if you're up over on Patreon and you're using that to color match, test your colors first, you'll probably recognize that we are going a lot farther down with this than what the reference photo kind of tells us to do, but that's okay. I'm intentionally doing it so that I can layer my clouds on top of it with the colors that are shown in that photo. Just something to consider when you are working with a reference photo, sometimes it's easier to paint what you know is behind the subjects in the photo and then paint those subjects on top of it. So, in our photo, we have much more of this warm, orangish peach, and that's something that we are going to incorporate, just not quite yet. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more, not much though. Titanium white, red, blue. You can see that we actually got a bit of a darker variant that time. And I always try to leave a little bit of my past mixture on the edge, just so I can test and make sure that I am on the right track. This is definitely more of what we wanted. And this, with a little bit of extra titanium white, will be our last application of this color, for now at least. We can always go back in and do touch-ups. I can tell that the paint is starting to dry, so we're getting quite lucky here, finishing just as it is. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of a smooth out, going up even higher. This is getting quite dry, so I'm going to be very gentle. I'm not trying to move much paint at all. Very soft strokes. Just making sure it's cohesive, and we don't really see any noticeable brush strokes. Very happy with that, though. So, with that, what we're now going to do is we're going to start working with a different color, a different red, a warmer red. And that red is our cadmium red light hue. I'll mix it right beside this so that I know kind of what I'm going to be painting on top of. I'll grab some of our blue, not much, just a hint in the corner, and some titanium white. Quite a bit, actually. There we go. We have a really beautiful color. Just so easy. I'm going to test this on my reference photo, actually. Make sure it's what I like. And oh, it is. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I know this bottom area is going to be covered with it. So I'll start by just working around my rocks using the sharp edge of the brush. I'll work it up until the pink. Work it all the way across. Again, I didn't mix much paint initially. I will have to mix more. But I just wanted to make sure that it was what I wanted. So, not that red. We want this red. And for those of you who are kind of having troubles finding the various reds, I would suggest looking on places like Amazon. I know that they generally have a pretty good stock if your local art shop doesn't, but you could also use a, a regular cadmium red, make it cooler with more blue or warmer with a little bit of a warm yellow. So you do have a lot of other options if you can't find these exact colors. So now I'm working it up to this edge and then we're going to start doing what is called wet onto dry blending. So we are going to be working with wet paint on a dry backdrop, and we're going to try to get a very smooth transition and blend. We're going to do that with a bit of extra water on our brush to make it a little bit more transparent and a very soft touch, especially as we get towards the edges. We're just going to let our paint dissipate. So I'll grab this with a newly damp brush. Same brush, really, but just added some water to it. Going to start blending this up. You can see that 
semi-transparent, you can kind of see this color through it. Good, that is a soft blend and application. Let's grab a little bit more. I'm working with an X-shaped pattern for the most part. And this is something we're going to build up over multiple layers. And you know what? This is still a little bit wet. It's not fully dry. So I'm going to let it fully dry just so I can give you the full experience. And we'll be back in about five minutes my time, three seconds yours. So as you can see, our paint has now fully dried and I did go ahead and add a second layer just to ensure it was nice and thick so that we didn't see the canvas or the tooth kind of showing through there. And at this point, I'm very happy with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the medium sized round pointed brush. As you can see it has a nice sharp end to it, but the edges are very soft. So you can kind of work with a rounded stroke on the canvas, render some really soft looking clouds, and that's exactly what we're going to do. It is, by the way, about a quarter of an inch wide. With that said, I am making it a little bit damp right now. We're going to grab some of our cadmium red light hue. We're going to grab quite a bit of our titanium white. Mix up a pink very similar to what we have here on the palette. I do believe I used a small amount of our ultramarine blue, so I'll work that in there. That's exactly what we wanted. We're not going to get a vibrant purple with this red and this blue, which is actually great. Don't want that right now. And then we're going to start painting in some clouds. And we're going to do this, again, wet onto dry. So here you can see we'll just work that into this area so that it doesn't look off if the colors are a little bit different. I started creating this nice little line of clouds. We'll create one over here as well. Blend that back down. And then I'm going over the edges with a very minimal amount of pressure and a rounded stroke with the brush, letting it dissipate, letting it run out. And this is going to create that nice soft look. I'm purposefully leaving little openings like this so you can see the previous color showing through. That'll make it very evident that this is in fact a cloud and not just another color in the sky. It'll also create some depth for us. So here we'll kind of continue. And I think I'm going to have it move up all the way to here. But because we have a lot of water on our brush and because we're being very light, we're moving the paint out in all directions. You can see that it's very quickly becoming semi-transparent rather than the opaque cloud that we have kind of at the bottom here. This is a great thing. This is, again, a conduit to depth and what we really want in this process. So, grab some extra blue, red, mix that up. Definitely needs a little bit more titanium white. Work that in. And you know what, we might as well work with all of the red that we have there. Which means we do need more blue and white. Better to mix the entirety of the paint that you have, rather than have some areas a little bit more white, some areas a little bit more red, some areas a little bit more blue, because eventually you'll accidentally grab one of the other colors, and it'll make your mixes on the canvas uneven. So, spending a little bit of extra time here, just working through all of those pigments is going to be very advantageous down the road. With that, I think I'll thicken a portion of this cloud right here, just in the middle. I'll still let it dissipate as we get towards the edges. I am looking at the reference photo for where I'm going to put a lot of these clouds, but I can see that there's a lot of these almost linear clouds in here that have very soft edges. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. And I do want my paint to run out at this point. I really want it to dissipate as we get this way. I have a little bit too much paint to kind of blend out the edges. So I'm going to clean my brush quite well here. Then I'm going to dry it off quite well. It can be a little bit damp, but nothing more than a little bit. 
And now I'm going to go back into those edges. And if I'm quiet, you can probably hear the scraping on the canvas. And you can start to see that soft blend that we're creating. So if your sky isn't absolutely perfect, it's actually okay because we are going to be doing a lot of these soft clouds throughout it. And you wouldn't really notice those little imperfections from that first layer anyway. There we go. Definitely progressing very, very nicely. Now we'll grab some extra paint and we'll say, okay, we have this larger area like that. I can see that there's a little bit more in the reference photo over here. So we'll paint that in. And it actually kind of connects to this. You might notice that the pigment changes a little bit as we continue. That is okay. It's bound to happen. We're getting very close with our mixes, but they might be a little bit different. And the actual lighting on the cloud should evolve. So it makes sense. A lot of this is also going to be semi-transparent, so you're going to see a lot of the bluish purple showing through it, which is going to visually change the color. So just recognize if it isn't exactly like that, it does make sense. And it's okay. There we are. Like that a lot so far. It's all very simple at this point. We need a lot of extra layers, a lot of extra highlights, but the two colors together look great and the application style looks great. So we're building that foundation, those bare bones to the piece, and soon we'll be able to really start adding some details and filling it out. Right now we're just kind of getting acquainted with the idea and the rendering that will be. You can see just how transparent and soft it's getting at this point though. How infrequently I'm going back to my palette and brush. But with that, I'm very happy with that area and we're going to start working in a slightly different cloud, a darker cloud. We'll do that right at the top corner and I'll get you a little bit closer for that. So prior to this step, you can just kind of redraw in what you have. If you do decide to do so, I would recommend using Conte. It does generally come off with a little bit of water on your brush so it doesn't stay on the canvas, it doesn't dilute the pigment. Very, very efficient for drawing on pre-painted areas. But I'm going to kind of freehand it just again by looking at the reference photo. So I'm going to start by grabbing some of our ultramarine blue and I don't know that we'll need this color again, so we'll work on top of this. I know that I'm going to want it to be more of a purple, so I'm going to use the primary red rather than the cadmium red, light hue, and oh, that is already off to a great start. I'm going to grab some Mars black for the first time in this lesson, and a little bit of titanium white. I don't want it to be bright, but I don't want it to be too saturated or rich, so just mixing up a nice dark purple. I'm going to put my palette down for a second. I'm going to do a little test. I like that. It's slightly, slightly more saturated, slightly darker than what we have. So I'll grab just a little bit more white and that looks perfect. So now I'm going to head up to this corner. starting in the body of the cloud, and then I'm going to work my way out to some of the edges. And I'm not going to paint it exactly like the reference photo, I'm going to take some artistic liberties, but I'm going to use it as a general reference. I'm going to look at it, I'm going to say, okay, do I like that movement? Yeah, well then we'll, we'll incorporate that. If no, then you know what, I'll change it. And here you can see I'm already running out of pigment. So now that I am running out of pigment, I'm just going over those edges, softening things up a little bit. But it's another really, really beautiful color within the rest of the painting. 
We're going to have a little opening here, nice little detail in the cloud. And I think when everybody initially thinks about painting clouds, they think of painting these very round, simple, structured subjects. But if you look at these and you look at this, they really aren't that. They're moving, they're flowing, they're different, they're interesting. And I'd always implore a new painter to kind of take whatever preconceived notions of what subjects look like in your head and just kind of throw them out. Use references, use what you can see in real life in the moment and copy that because generally a lot of us grew up with things like that of cartoons and in our early years that really plays a big role in what we imagine things to look like. So we have this very simplified version of how to render these subjects in our heads, right? But when you actually look at things in real life or in photos, you generally find that they're a lot more complex if they have all of these other interesting pieces to them. And so try not to simplify, try not to go with just the first and only idea that you have in your head. Recognize that clouds can be these very interesting, unusual shapes and have fun with it, right? Don't feel constrained to what you first think about. Change things, adapt. Here we are moving a cloud on top of this, further establishing depth. Yeah. Very good. Softening the edges here, I'm doing a little bit of a tap, but it's also with a rounded blend. And you're going to want some edges to be a bit more defined and sharp than others. That's also important to recognize. You can also see that I'm using very, very small amounts of paint here initially. All of these layers are very thin here. I'm essentially just sketching with pigment. And then later, once I have what I know I want, and everything's kind of in the right spot, then I can go in with something a little bit more thick. There we go. I like that a lot though. I think that's great. So now we will mix some additional paint here. And this time I will mix more than I did before. We've kind of, we've established that practice round and now we can really dive into something with a larger quantity. I'm gonna test that on my photo. Could use a little bit more red. I'm gonna test that on my photo. You know what, a little bit more red again, and maybe a little bit of white because the red isn't that bright. Again, testing, and I think this is a great example of just not going with the first option that you have. And here we're changing the color a little bit. It's always an option. Getting the majority of the paint off in the body. Go back, blend those edges. It's nice and subtle here. Let it dissipate up near the top so it slowly gets slightly more blue again, which is nice. You get some added depth there. But you can see that a more blue cloud or a more purple cloud are both options. They both look quite good. So it's really up to you and what you want to do with it. Again, feel free to take those artistic liberties. Have fun with it. And I realized earlier that I, or I realized now that earlier I said, you know, kind of throw out those preconceived ideas because they can hinder the realism in a piece, but it's okay to take those ideas and implement them into more fully realized ideas, right? To create a combination, to interject to yourself, your experiences, what you remember into what you actually see. And it's through that combination that you come up with some really interesting, beautiful, but also natural and realistic things. So just something to consider. Here I'm just going in with 
a wet brush and doing some blends on the edges. This is something that I could honestly go over for an hour, just kind of playing, tweaking with, having fun. But because this is a lesson, I think I'm going to tweak this for another five, ten minutes off camera, then together we'll expand these clouds out farther that way. Don't want to uh, take too much of your time, but hopefully you feel like you're learning and you're having a lot of fun. So I put another five-ish minutes into the clouds right there, and at this point I am quite happy with them. So we are going to continue working those clouds this way in the painting, but we're going to be working on much smaller areas than what we have right here. So I'm now switching to a smaller round pointed brush. This one is about an eighth of an inch rather than a quarter of an inch. It also has that nice sharp tip and it does have that rounded edge. So it really does everything we need when working on clouds. I still have my color that I was working with, so I'm going to work from that. Just try to mix that color that we have on the edge there. Probably have too much white. You can see that I'm taking the white and the black off elsewhere. That way I don't dilute this pigment too, too much. I can test this in our previous applications. I can see that I like it a lot. And I know that I'm really going to want something over here kind of working this way. So looking at the reference photo, I'm saying, you know what, we need something right here. You can see that I'm painting with my hand holding very far away from the tip of the brush. I'm not holding it like a pencil. I want more of a fluid motion and this is going to help me achieve it. It's also going to allow me to paint from a little bit farther back, which is a great technique when you want to ensure that you're balancing multiple areas of the painting. And I really want to ensure that I am balancing these clouds with these, that I don't kind of overdo it here, that it all just stays even. So I start with this. I can tell that I want this to be a bit wider, so I'll create a new under area to this cloud. So far, so good. Want this to be more condensed. Right now, it kind of looks like we have all of these little taps where rather I want sections of clouds. There we go. Definitely moving in the correct direction. We'll have a little one that's kind of coming up here though Because we interjected another little one, I think I'll connect these two. And now we definitely need more paint. So, we grab some red, which we are going to need to grab more of very soon. A little bit of black, taking off the excess. A little bit of white, taking off the excess. I think it needs slightly more blue. In the reference photo, the cloud that I'm currently painting doesn't go behind the rock here, but I'm going to paint it behind the rock just because I feel like it'll give us slightly more depth. Again, that's kind of an example of taking an artistic liberty to enhance what you see in nature. And then in the photo, we do have a couple more clouds down here, but I'm going to do less of them because I don't want it to look too complicated too quick, and we can definitely go back and add more as we kind of near the end of the painting. There we go. You can see that we're still overlapping that nice pink cloud. So we have three layers of depth already in the painting. We have the true sky. We have this layer of really beautiful clouds. And then we have these darker clouds that are also on top of it. And it's all really just amalgamating. In the reference photo, there's another cloud right below here. I think I'm going to move it slightly more to the right, just because I don't want a cloud directly in the middle of the painting. I think that might be a little bit distracting and not all that dyna much dynamic. Not all that much dynamic as we uh, 
frequently talk about in this series. I, uh, I have been drinking a lot of coffee lately. <laughs> it does occasionally make me trip on my words a little bit. But hopefully, again, that just makes the process a little bit more comical, a little bit more enjoyable on that front. Might even invent a couple words by accident. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Here we're keeping it subtle, doing another little one there. Give it a semi-transparent friend. That worked out well. And then we have another one right here. It's rather large, comparatively. It leads us from this into this. Softening the edges. In the process of softening the edges, a lot of the time you will very much make the middle of the cloud quite transparent because you're stretching that paint. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to the middle of the cloud and apply more paint. Make sure it's opaque with the edges semi-transparent. Doing a little flick, a little tail to this, that'll draw the eye. Back over here, these are all essentially leading lines. The eye maybe comes in through this top corner and then it follows these clouds and it gets to this one and then, oh, it can jump to these. It'll move into the rock, bring us back into the painting. We're always looking for movements in our natural subjects. And I'm trying to make it so that these lead into this and then this acts as a transitional piece. There we go. That is quite nice. Now, what we're going to do next is start to work on this area of the cloud. We're going to make it a lot warmer. We're going to add some oranges. We're going to add some yellows. But at this point, it's not, it's not the best move because we have blue on our brush from these clouds. We have blue in our water. And if we were to mix blue with a yellow down here, we would essentially dilute the pigment and we may end up with something a little bit green. So it's a little bit too risky to do that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my, bra my, uh, my brushes and my water very thoroughly, and then we'll head back into there. So we are back yet again, and we're going to go in with the slightly larger round pointed brush. This one again is about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to make sure it's a little bit damp because we will be doing that wet onto a dry technique. And now we have some of our primary yellow here on the palette. I'm going to make a new mixture with our cadmium red light hue and quite a bit of titanium white. I really want to desaturate this and the white is going to do just that. So here we're mixing it up. I'm going to test it on my reference photo. I can tell that it's significantly more bright than I want. So you know what, we will add a little bit of extra red in there. We can build up to the more yellow highlight over time. Test that again, and that looks fantastic. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head right down here and add in some light. Starting kind of at the bottom. And then I'm going to start moving up softly, softly. I'm going to grab a little bit of water. Use more of the side of the brush. Let it dissipate. You can see that we're getting that nice soft blend. And we're so close. There we go. Very, very strong start right there. Now we're going to want just little hints of it, kind of cascading across some of these clouds. So I have some very watery mixtures, doing essentially three-ish lines this way. 
Going to take all of the pigment off my brush yet again. Just make it nice and damp. And we'll do some blending upwards. You can see just how much diversity this is adding to the sky without interjecting dramatically different colors. All feels very cohesive still. And if you feel like you add a little bit too much, you can always go back in with the pink that you also used earlier in the lesson. Going to add a little bit more, just right here. Feel like there's a nice balance between those two spots. Give some dimension to these clouds. And that is, that is really nice. Okay, I'm very happy. So now we're going to go back down to here and we're going to brighten it up a little bit. So I'll grab some extra titanium white. Probably a lot. And I'll mix kind of on the side here, just grabbing what I need. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Keep this on the brighter end. There we go. Now we're going to do that same blend, but I don't want this to go up too, too high. I want this to be a bit more limited in its reach. Blending into that nice orange we just established. And this is something that I'm going to want to be quite a bit more thick, but I'm not quite ready to commit to that. I want it to dry more before we really build up those bright pigments and more so the opacity of them. Here I'm just kind of softening the pink on this side. And that is pretty beautiful. So at this point, I'm very happy with everything that's happening right here. Now we're going to have a couple lines of cloud. We're going to have some sky showing through. And the next step, I think, is to kind of recreate some of those pinks that we have, those pinkish oranges down here. So I'm going to move the camera and then we will continue together. So we're now a bit farther down and we're going to start working all of the base colors into here. So I know I want something very similar to this. I know that we used quite a bit of our cadmium red light hue, quite a bit of our titanium white, and a small hint of our ultramarine blue as well. So we'll grab all of those. The ultramarine blue is starting to dry. It's okay though. More titanium white. And that looks like what we want. It's a little bit more red. So a little bit more titanium white, maybe a hint more blue. Perfect. Now, this is going to be darker than that, especially initially, and that's okay. Just recognize that that is currently what we are attempting to do. There we go. We're going to want to make this nice and thick. Definitely going to need more paint. Almost grabbed that by accident. Try to avoid that. Can happen, you know, we're, uh, we're painting with red. Generally, we don't paint with too many different reds. So, just innately say, oh, red, okay, great. Go and grab that. And then maybe it's not, not the optimal choice. But that's all right. We did catch it. Here I am painting the sky with the medium-sized round pointed brush instead of the brush we were using previously, the one inch flat headed brush, because we're not really working in that large of an area. And I'm not too concerned about these edges here. Now I'm going to make this a bit more orange. So I will take some yellow and this right now has the smallest hint of blue, but it is so small that I do feel very confident in just working in the yellow here. Maybe a little bit more 
white, a little bit more yellow. We're going to have clouds partially covering this so it's not going to be as bright, but we still want it to have the same feel. Beautiful. I really like how these colors work together. It's one of those sets where the painting itself doesn't actually have to be amazing, immaculate. It'll look great just because of the colors. And that isn't always the case. And it's nice when it is because as you paint, you say, oh, you know what, I really like that. Oh, you know what, I really like that. It's not this constant process of, oh, I need, I need to do something right now. I need to fix this. It's kind of rewarding throughout the entirety of the process. So that's really nice. That said, we are still going to make a very, very beautiful painting. So we are going to take these amazing colors and we're just going to add to that. Expand on it and do all that we can with it. Here, I'm working into a bit more of a yellow. I'm going to work that down here. This is more so going to be covered by clouds, so I'm going to leave that essentially where it is for now. If anything, I might desaturate it a little bit, but I'm fairly happy. Here, we're just working more of the yellow. In, and you know what? I'll probably grab something from here. That did turn out more red than I wanted, a little bit darker than I wanted, but it's okay, we can keep fixing it. Beautiful. So this is probably our third, maybe fourth layer down in this area. Just to Again, kind of reiterate that layering is important, and it really will look better the more layers you apply to it. With that, the more I do there, the more I realize I do want this to be a little bit more soft, a little bit less saturated, and this will do exactly that. So here we'll do one layer. You can tell that these are different because that has more layers on it. And now we get a little bit more titanium white. It's also important to recognize, and you can see this, this color is not what you see on the sky. And that's because we're not just using this color, we're using all of the colors underneath that are currently wet on the canvas. So we're getting a combination of colors. If you wanted exactly this, you would either wait for this to dry entirely, or you'd mix something that's quite a bit brighter and more yellow. There we go. I can tell in the reference photo that this area right here is actually a bit more yellow and bright. The light's just shining through more optimally in that area. So we will interject that. A little bit of a blend. I like that. That is so, so subtle. But it's a nice addition. It's exactly what we want. And here I'm just doing a little bit of a blend outwards. I have almost no paint on my brush. So again, I'm brightening this a little bit, but also really just attempting to soften that saturation. And now we're at a point in the painting where it looks a little bit rough, right? Because we do have these open areas, which are going to have more of a purple. But before we get to that, it's important that yet again, we clean our brushes and our water because we are going to start working with blues again and we don't want the yellows that are currently on our brush and in our water to get in there and create those greens. So we're going to take a five minute break, let that dry completely, clean our brushes, our water, and then I will see you in just a second. Our canvas is now dry, so we're going to go back in with the smaller round pointed brush and start working the clouds in through here. I'm going to do so with some of our ultramarine blue and of course our primary red, not our cadmium red light hue. Then I'll grab some of our Mars black, work that into the mixture, a little bit of titanium white, make it slightly darker than the clouds that we previously 
incorporated a little bit higher up in the painting. So I am looking for a mix that's a little bit darker than what we have right there. And that should do it. So, now, I'm going to start more so in the middle of the clouds. As we do, we like to make that nice and thick first. Make my brush a little bit more damp. And then we can kind of create those nice, soft edges that blend into the previously applied, now dry, pigment. Just like that. Nice and easy, right? Grab more of our paint. And there are essentially three lines of clouds in the reference photo. I may only do two if I feel like the third will overcomplicate it, but we'll see. That's currently up for debate. I also definitely need significantly more paint. So, we will make a much larger mixture here. Grabbing my blue and my red first. Mars black next. Titanium white after that. Turned out a little bit too gray. So what do we do if it's too desaturated? We just add more color. I think we'll add a little bit more and just play with it until we have exactly what we want. Which I believe is this. Going to use the side of my brush and we can also start working this in as well. Yet again, we mixed a very small amount at the starting steps and now we're moving into the slightly more comfortable zone. We know we like our mix so we mix more of it. We apply the body, and then we come back in and we soften the edges. That said, we will definitely be coming back in and brightening up a lot of these clouds. In fact, I'm not actually going to bring this as high up as I want, because I'm going to do that with a brighter color, but I'm going to make the edge relatively soft right here, just so that next blends a little bit easier. We don't have a hard line to kind of cover up and work on top of instead of something a bit more soft. So this is going to look relatively unfinished for the next little while, but that's okay. It really is just part of the process. And I have decided that I'm going to work in the third line of clouds. So here you can see I'm just painting that next one in. It does combine with this one right here. It works over our rock. And now we've essentially eliminated all of the white canvas from the sky, despite the fact that it looks significantly more rough. Look at this in contrast with what we have up here. Look how soft those are. Look at that really nice blend. That's what we will be working towards. But it's a good reminder that when you're just starting your painting, things are going to look a little bit rough and you're not going to have any really finished beautiful areas to say, oh, you know what, this is what it's going to turn into. So you kind of just have to trust the process, have fun with it. And that's something I always try to stress kind of early on in the lesson. We really are just building the foundations at that point of something that we will make really gorgeous, but we do have to work through those slightly awkward stages to get there. And now we have some payoff up there, and we're working to get it down here. You can see that a lot of this isn't necessarily straight. I have these little areas that kind of bump up in different amounts, so that it's consistently progressing and changing. Just building this up, making sure it's nice and thick. But because we're using quite a bit of water in this area right now, we're creating these thin layers, and if we were to apply too much pressure, too much water, too much paint while it's all wet, you can kind of scrape the paint off, and that's something I'm a little bit worried about doing right here. So I'm actually going to let all of this dry before we go into it again, just because I do feel like it's 
at that point where it's a little bit risky and you really know that feeling the more and more you paint you can kind of pick up on it as you just move over things if it feels like oh you know what I, I might be taking up a little bit of paint here if you find that take a little break let it dry fully then you won't have any issues at all so yet again a little bit of break um, <laughs> I feel like we've been taking quite a few breaks in this but it's not a bad thing it's a good reminder to you know get up, get some water, maybe make some tea, have a little bit of a snack, do all of these other good little things, keep things tidy, you know, great, great little um, uses for breaks. But with that, I'm going to let this dry and I will see you in, you know, three seconds. So we have now a fully dry cloud and we can go back in with the smaller round pointed brush and add in some highlights. For that, I think I'm going to start by taking some of our primary red, a little bit of our primary blue. We'll probably leave it to be about an even mixture here, at least in the beginning. And then we'll need some titanium white. We of course don't want it to be too bright. We're going to build it up over time. So I'll also grab some Mars black. Here you can see it turned out quite gray. So we'll just re-interject some red and blue. Easy fix. And now, we need to think about where the light's coming from and how it's affecting these clouds. In a lot of this, the light's coming through the top here. Hypothetically, there's light down here, but there are more clouds kind of in the way. So these top areas are going to get the most light. So we'll start by working around the edge at the top of this cloud. Get a nice soft edge. Go slightly outside of the previous application, that way we don't get that hard line. And then we can kind of blend back down. Again, this is wet into dry. And now we have a slightly brighter top and some depth for it. Let's continue over on this side. Water really will be your best friend in this scenario. You do want your pigment to be quite thin. And if you find it's making a very, very small difference, it's not an issue at all. It's actually a great thing. It means you can build it up over a longer period of time, make smaller, very purposeful corrections, and get it exactly how you want. With that, I'm going to mix some additional paint. I did end up liking that color. Yet again, I mixed it too gray. Seems to be a common habit here, but Easy fix, slightly brighter this time. Let's see how we like this. Again, applying it directly to the top, going slightly outside of our previous boundaries. If we don't like it, we can always just go over it with something darker. Better to try and know than kind of just always wonder. The lesson you'll learn, even if it's wrong, is definitely more valuable than just keeping it the right way the first time. And now here, we're working it back in, down. Definitely created a lot of extra depth. In the end, I'm happy to say I'm a big fan. That said, it's getting a little bit rough in the blend because we have a lot of paint here, but not that much water. So here I have just a wet brush, no extra paint on it. This will help me work into all of the canvas tooth, get a much softer gradient. It'll just look significantly more clean visually. There we go. So here we have the two different variations. I'd like to use this, but I know that it's a little bit too bright for that first layer. So we'll remix more of the darker version. There we go. Again, we're starting at the top. And I think I'm going to have this kind of reach out and semi-transparently touch the top one. But we'll leave some openings. Remember, lots of water. My brush is quite damp, if not almost wet right now. And I almost never make it fully wet, but this is a scenario where it is useful. 
when you are trying to get those wet into dry blends. Just makes them look really soft, right? Now I'll get some extra titanium white. Definitely need more color in it. Red and blue. We'll try that. And that's the fix. Going to create a couple of different layers in this. So I didn't blend all the way down. I kind of skipped an area here, kind of skipped an area there, a little area there, making it look a bit more patchy intentionally to make it look like the cloud has multiple volumes and areas that kind of stick out. Again, it's a nice little easy way to depth. Here you can see I'm jumping around a little bit. You can also add a little bit of a highlight to the very bottom to show that the light is touching all areas but it just can't wrap around to the back. You can also see that I'm holding my brush like a pencil right now, something we haven't done for a while. This is just to keep things very precise in this area. We will do that right down here as well. But you can see that this dark area still exists. Very good. We'll move up to here. Red, blue, white, a little bit of black, and then inevitably more red and blue. There we are. And this isn't our highlight color just yet. This is our mid value or mid hue. Let it get darker as it comes down. Now we'll brighten it up and resaturate it. Almost there. Let's try that. Let's try it down here first, just to make sure that it makes sense with the rest of what we've kind of established. And you know what, I like it so much down here. It's a little bit brighter, but it just looks so good. So we'll continue to add that for a second. And now we'll grab more and we'll head back up. Remember we do the edges first. Still trying to keep it relatively soft. A little bit of a blend down. I know we're getting a little bit repetitive right now, but sometimes that repetition is really good, it kind of keeps things in our heads. I know that I personally learn significantly better through repetition, and when I'm trying to learn a new painting technique or someone's teaching me, I like it when things are repeated. So hopefully you're finding it quite useful, but if you are finding it a little repetitive, don't you worry, we will be moving on to the next step quite shortly. There we go. Quite nice. Now I do want little clouds kind of coming out. These are soft, they're semi-transparent, they get that extra depth. The goal here is to build it out and make it interesting, but not make it too, too complicated, right? There we go. And now we will just mix kind of a mid blue and we'll use quite a bit of water on our brush and we'll create just some small details around the clouds to make them look like the edges have these little offshoots. Very tiny. We're not really trying to keep the edges looking the same, so we're 
looking for different little movements and patterns. Some are going to be more transparent than others. The smaller the changes, the better it'll look, the more natural it will look. We're trying to pick up a lot of detail here. But still within the balance. And we definitely need some coming down here as well. There we go. Nice and subtle. I love that actually. That's really, really nice. With that, I do think it's time to start working on the next portion of the painting. Now, with a clean brush and clean water, we're going to head right back in here and establish just a little bit more light. This is really more of a touch-up phase, so it could change person to person depending upon how much you've kind of incorporated, but I can tell that I would like a little bit more, so I'm using a lot of yellow, a hint of our cadmium red light hue, quite a bit of titanium white, and I think this looks quite nice. Let's test it in our previously applied light source area. Looks quite nice, I like that a lot, but I think it's also just a little bit too bright, so, or rather too saturated. So we'll add in some extra titanium white, we'll add in a hint more red because red is a darker value than what we have here. And that looks much more, much more natural. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit more light, just peeking through here. My brush is fairly damp, so it should be semi-transparent. Here I'm just going to go over it with some extra water. And this is partially to make the painting better, but also partially just to show you that you can kind of go back and play with these things, make areas lighter, darker, with the wet into dry technique. There we go. We have a little bit of light kind of cascading over the top of the cloud there. I like that a lot. I might kind of extend it over other portions of this. I think it looks quite natural. Just like that. Grab more of it. Definitely want some down here. And if you find that you go over portions of these darker clouds, you can always just add more of those darker clouds. You can expand them. We're going back and we're adding more light, but we can also go back and add more dark. So this is really just to show you that we can work through a bit of a corrective process. There we go. The more we add to this painting, the more I love it. Just feel like we're tweaking it in all the right ways right now. I think we could use slightly more light. Every time we add more, it builds up. Because it's semi-transparent, you see the color underneath, but the color underneath keeps getting brighter. So the new layer keeps getting brighter and closer to what you actually see on the palette. That is so, so close to what I wanted. Now I just want a bit more up in here. Not too much. Finding that balance, letting it dissipate. There we go. Yeah, that is, that is just what I wanted. Very, very happy with it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to mix up a little bit of a slightly darker pinkish 
orange, something close to what we've been working with. Here I did just grab blue, but I didn't have any real yellow on my brush, so I felt pretty safe with it. But if you do feel like your water and your brush are quite yellow, make sure you clean them before you grab blue, like I just did. And now I'm going to work in just a small pink cloud here in the background. I noticed it in the reference photo. I thought, oh, you know what? That's a great, great example of another layer of depth. There we go. And I think that's all we need on that front. So when we step back, as you can see, I did go ahead and just roughly sketch the edge of this nice rock area right here, as well as a distant piece of land. I personally use my paintbrush and some very wet Mars black paint, but you don't have to commit in that same way. Again, using Conte is a much safer way of going about it. You can kind of just take a damp brush work over it and it'll be gone. But I did feel fairly confident with where I wanted things, so I just went ahead and did that. But we now have an area established. So how are we going to fill these in? Are we going to use the same values, the same colors? What colors should they be? It's rock, so I think a lot of us probably think the grays and the browns are probably the right situation, but I think it's important to consider the atmosphere, the lighting in the actual scene, because we have all of these really beautiful oranges, purples, pinks, and that's going to create a lot of atmospheric reflection. It's going to come down on all of the subjects here. So they are going to actually adopt a lot of those colors, and more so in the background. The farther away a subject is, the more reflected light you will see on it, and the closer a subject is, so kind of rocks in the foreground, you're going to have more of the innate natural coloring. So something like this is going to be a bit more diffused, it's going to be a bit more of the colors of the atmosphere, and so we're actually going to mix a purple for the back here, something relatively close to what we have there. But we want it to progressively get darker as we move into the foreground, so we can't make it that dark. And if we do, that's okay, because we can always go back and fix it. But as a general rule, you want your background to be a bit more subtle, and then as you move into the foreground, you do get something that's a bit more high contrast and stark, especially in landscapes. So here, I mixed up a fairly similar to purple to what we've been working with. If it's a little bit too dark, which it may be, I'll go over it again with something a little bit lighter. My brush is fairly damp. That is important because I want this to have nice sharp edges. I want that extra control. And you know what? I think I do want it to be a little bit brighter. So we'll grab some extra titanium white. Work that in there, want that saturation back, blue, red. It's probably too bright at this point, more Mars black. Kind of just working back and forth always, right? Until we find exactly what we want. And here, I found, honestly, more of the same color. But it's another layer on the canvas, so that's not a bad thing. A lot a bit more of that. And this should all be wet paint, so when I apply this lighter pigment, it should actually blend with what we have, rather than create something too, too bright, and that is what is happening. So, very happy there. Just creating this nice little landmass in the background. Not too stark. You can see there's a little bit of a break. You can see into the horizon, and then there's a bit more land right there. Makes it more interesting. And then right in front of it, we actually have a slightly darker area because there's a protruding area, it gets closer to us. The contrast gets higher. So we'll incorporate that as well. There we go. That's nice. So there, we've established more depth very quickly, very easily. And I think we'll take more of this color to establish that, but we'll probably want a brush that can cover a larger space. So I'm switching to the other large round pointed brush. This one again is instead 
about a quarter of an inch. I know I want that color right there. We'll mix up more paint because that is definitely not enough to do it at this point. Mixing it up and there we go. That was very, very quick and easy. I like that a lot. As you can see though, it's brighter currently than what we have in the clouds. And that's kind of an issue. We probably want this to be a little bit darker. So I'm probably going to make this a little bit darker. And I'll probably make the clouds maybe a little bit brighter later on. It's all about balancing things. Get a little bit more Mars black in there. But not too much. Maybe a hint more red. I'll probably make these mixes slightly more red than they are blue. Want my land to look warm, not cool, for the most part. That said, primary red is definitely more of a cool red than a warm red. While it's important to think about colors as if uh, blue's uh, cool or warm, if red's cool or warm, it's also important to recognize that there are more cold blues and more cold reds. There are more warm reds and more warm blues as well. They all have their own individual spectrums. But I think in this scenario, the red, despite the fact that it's a cool red, is still more warm than the blue, despite the fact that ultramarine blue is actually a warm blue. So, yeah, <laughs> a, little, a little more deep on the color theory side of things, but definitely interesting. With that, I'm going to let all of this dry. I'm going to do a secondary layer on it because I can tell it's a little bit thin, but after that we will jump back into the painting together. So now, yet again, we are going to continue moving down in the painting and we're going to work on the water right back here. I'm going to do so with the one inch flat headed brush. We used this previously for the sky because it does cover a lot of surface area and I'm going to make sure it's nice and damp. Then I'm going to mix up a color very similar to what we have right here in the sky. We want it to be something that really does feel like it is representative of the colors in the sky. And I think that right there is exactly what we need. So we're going to start here by taking some of our cadmium red light hue, moving that down, grabbing quite a bit of titanium white, mixing those two up together here. And then I think it needs a hint of orange as well. So we'll also grab some of our primary yellow. Now, very carefully, we'll work in a line. And I'll need to expand that up a little bit. Just like that. As you can see, I am refining. Make sure that it's as straight as it can possibly be. It does make a difference in the end. It is something that's generally pretty noticeable. And then we're just going to move down. Work around our rocks. And that's again another great reason why we chose this brush specifically. I have a lot of rocks here and I can work around them very easily just using the corner of my brush. That said, there are a lot of very small rocks right in here and those I am willing to work on top of. So we're off to a good start, though we could definitely continue working on it. I'm going to grab a little bit of blue because we didn't use much yellow in this. Get some extra red, hint of black. Water is almost always darker than the sky. So I want this to be a hint darker, but not much. You can see I'm very slowly adding in black. Working that in, you can tell that it is slightly darker. Our pigment is getting thicker, which is nice as well. We don't see the white of the canvas showing through to such a great extent. Let's 
So far, so good. And the next part here is essentially layering in other colors, adding some detail. But I don't want to do that while we have so much wet paint on the canvas. And I also want to do a secondary layer of that. So I'm going to take a little break there and I'm going to work on the sand right out here. And this is also going to have quite a reflection on it because it is going to be fairly wet. So I know that this is the color that we use there. We'll probably use a little bit of it. But we'll also use quite a bit of Mars Black. Grab more. Grab more. I'm going to test what I currently have on my reference photo. I can tell that it's much too dark for the areas around the water, the very reflective areas. So I'll add some titanium white. Test that. And that actually looks really wonderful. So, start yet again working around my rocks. Sand is definitely something I think a lot of us innately think of as a very light tan, kind of a brown, but here in the reference photo it's actually much more of a dark red. Kind of looks like a purple in areas. So that's what we're starting with. As we get farther back, the sand's going to get darker because it's less reflective. So I'll add in more Mars Black. Cutting along the edges. And then we'll want to do a fairly soft blend. I will be covering all of our other rocks, the smaller ones. And we'll just redraw them in. Let me move the camera down just a little bit. Now it's important to note that at this point we are moving into what I would consider a very rough stage in the painting. And these definitely occur throughout the painting process and it's always just so important to look at your past pieces in these scenarios, to look at the finished areas of this piece and recognize that it's going to be okay. We can have areas that do look messy, we can build on them, we can add layers, we can make them just as great as everything else you've made before. And this is really just where we need to kind of have faith in the process because for a little while it may look a little bit rough. And that's okay. Here we are working around wet water. So we are working with wet sand. So we are working with a brighter pigment. Now we'll start making it a bit darker again. So extra Mars black. And I don't have too much paint on my brush. I don't have too much paint on my palette. So I'm kind of having to grind the brush into the canvas to really get any movement and blend. And that is a little bit risky because you end up with rather thin layers. So in those scenarios, once you know what colors you want, I do recommend mixing more of that pigment. That way you don't have to kind of fight the pigment there, especially in larger areas that you do want smooth blends in. This is really where you want an abundance of paint so that you can work quickly with it so that it can glide on the canvas, you don't have to fight it, and you can really just work on your blends. Getting closer. Starting to run out of paint and oh, will we be able to cover it? I don't think so. So, more pigment. Sometimes, by the way, when I work on a large area that I know I'm going to want to work wet into wet, I pre-mix all of my paints, all of my different mixes, so I can just go in, do the painting, do the blending, 
And so if you really find you struggle with larger skies or just large areas that you want to look soft, try to pre-mix everything and it'll be much, much easier. And mix an abundance of it once you know that those colors are as correct as they can be. With that, I'm also going to take a little bit of blue, work that into this darker pigment, and I will add that in the more shadowy areas to the right and closer to us. Because remember, the closer you get to the audience with your painting, the higher the contrast. So we can add some depth that way. Really like that. Looks good, looks natural. Now cleaning my brush. Cleaning it quite well, actually. And we're going to head back into there with this round pointed brush, slightly larger one. Making sure it too is nice and damp. Now we'll mix up a, a brighter variant of what we were working with. So, take our cadmium red, titanium white, we'll mix into a little bit of this. I'm going to test on my reference photo. I think we could use a little bit of blue. I know that looks a little bit stark right now, but just trust me for a second. I'm going to start doing our blends. I can tell that my base layer is drying, so this will very soon be wet into dry. I'm okay with that. I'm trying to keep the brighter areas, for the most part, over to the left. has this real, almost, glow to it at this point. But again, looking very rough still, which is okay. Which is entirely okay. Here I'm adding a bit more of it. And I think it's time we take a step back and just make sure that we're kind of on the right track. So as we step back from the painting, again, it does look a little bit incomplete, but I do think that it is really coming along. I would also like to note that I did end up redoing these areas right here, just did another layer. However, I made a slight change and I was really excited when I figured it out. I painted this with the primary red instead of the cadmium red light hue. It made this a bit more cool, where this was warmer, and then they just worked really, really beautifully together. So it was a bit of a balancing thing. I also like how we have the cooler red kind of as the silhouette around the outskirts of the painting. It does create a bit of a vignette effect and it draws the eye into the more warm colors. So. I would highly recommend doing this area with the primary red rather than the cadmium red light hue in your second and third layers. And I would recommend doing two or three layers, especially here we are getting in the foreground. We do want it to be nice and thick. And again, I really like taking a couple of steps back in the painting because it really gives you an opportunity to look at multiple areas, say, okay, does that look like it's balancing well? Do we feel like those two subjects make sense in kind of the same atmosphere? And those are really important questions to ask. And they're things that are much easier to ask when you are kind of at a distance because when you are working very up close, you're probably very focused on your details and your very exact color mixes, right? But when you are farther away, you can kind of step away from all of that and just look at the piece as a whole and make sure that you are progressing in the ways that you want to. So at this point, I'm very happy with it. We still need to do a lot of work down here and do all of that. But at this point, it's definitely coming together and it is a little bit rough, but again, those, those stages happen in all paintings. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop back into this we're going to work on some rocks, some highlights in there, some other rocks, highlights on them. A lot to do. Let's get to it. 
Now, in the previous clip, I think I alluded to the fact that we were probably going to go ahead and start working on the rocks next to eliminate all of that unfinished space. However, I think layering-wise, it's actually going to be more advantageous for us to go into the water and start incorporating some highlights and some shadows. Just build some depth on it so that we can then build the rocks on top of it. With that, I'm going in with the smallest round pointed brush and we're going to start by creating some highlights. So for this, we're going to take our primary yellow, a little bit of our cadmium red, light hue. We're going to take some titanium white, make something nice and bright up. I'll put it in a different spot in the palette just so you can really see what it looks like. But with this, I'm going to say, okay, there's a lot of bright light over here, so it'll probably hit more so around this area. So let's start incorporating that through a series of horizontal strokes for the most part. And then we can have it dissipate as it moves towards the left. And we can let the brush kind of jump once in a while. So it skips a spot and then maybe we get a slight line over to the left hand side. Just a bit of stray light coming through the clouds. Definitely want some over here as well. And this is a very easy way of just building up that reflection. So let's continue. This time I think I might make it slightly more pink. And I try to layer on different varying pinks and oranges in this process. Make it as interesting as I can. Give the color a lot of depth and diversity. There we go. I think that is definitely an improvement so far. I think we'll take a break from the highlights though and start working on some shadows. And I know I want the shadows to be kind of close to the lighter purple, but a bit more desaturated than that. So I'm going to take the primary red rather than the cadmium red light hue, a little bit of our blue, titanium white, and Mars Black. Now if you wanted to be very safe with this, again clean your brush and your water after using the yellow before going to blue and vice versa. I didn't feel like we had a lot, I felt like we could be pretty safe with it, so I didn't go ahead and do that, but it's something you can definitely consider. With that, I'm now going to paint the underside of some waves coming up on shore. So these are receiving shadows, they aren't receiving light, and so they're going to look a little bit darker. It'll create some added detail in our water. We're going to try to keep them very sharp as well. Lots of water on our brush. If you accidentally make them too big, that's okay. It's easy to go back and just incorporate more of this highlighted color. There we go. Now we'll make a bit of a brighter purple this time and layer that kind of on top to the left hand side of them. I'm going to test that in my reference photo. Looks great. And we kind of blend this back to the left hand side. It'll make a lot more visual sense as we continue to build layers, but it's a good start. It's very subtle at this point. There we go. And now that we have the basics done for the water, we can go in and do additional highlights in a little bit. We can do extra shadows in a little bit, but I'm happy with it for now to the point where I think we can start working on our rocks. And for those, we're going to want to make a nice purple. We're going to make them a bit cooler. So we'll use the primary red 
and the ultramarine blue in conjunction with some Mars black, hint of titanium white, and this will create the darker base layers for them. I'm going to make sure my brush is nice and damp so I can render some very sharp areas and applications. As you can see, we also took out a lot of the rocks as we worked on the sand and water, so we will be reincorporating them. I'm going to look initially for the most dominant ones on the reference photo, but I'm also going to take artistic liberties and paint them where I like, where I feel like they make sense to balance the piece as well. I'm going to try to make sure that they are always evolving, changing. Don't want two of the same rock in any scenario. Looks very stark, but that is exactly what we wanted here. I always try to do the edges first and then I fill in the middle. Just refining edges here. And we are starting with the larger ones because they're going to be much more visually prominent. And we can use smaller ones to kind of fill in space to accentuate the composition of the large ones. Now this area as a whole is going to just have a myriad of rocks. So I can see that one kind of pokes up in this direction, which is nice, it's a bit of a leading line. And then we have one that kind of moves back here, kind of comes back down, and we have more of a jagged texture movement happening right behind it. And then we have one that really protrudes upwards. So I'm looking for the individual angles and motions of each rock and their trajectories. You could even use a protractor just to kind of really see how things change. And it'll definitely set you up for more success in the future. Just the realization of how many slight little divots and deviations this sort of thing has and how much that does, in the end, inevitably really aid your piece. I'm also, while I'm painting detail, I'm keeping the camera back and showing you a lot of this process from a distance because the most important thing about this process is not the actual brush stroke or the texture but how all of the rocks are spaced out in relation to one another. There we go. Again, I start with the edging. And now we have a lot of edge, so we can start moving in. Now, if you look closely, you can tell that this is all very, very thin right now. We're definitely going to need to go in and do at least one more layer, but probably two or three of the darker base. That's okay. Might start mixing up slightly more paint. I'm very confident with the darker color we've achieved and how it looks in the foreground setting of our painting. And we will divide these up into multiple rocks later on through the use of mid values and highlights. Now I do have a lot of water on my brush right now, so I can go in and start crafting really small rocks throughout this area. Those two look very similar right now, that is an issue. And they're also quite thin, so I'm going to extend this one out. If your rocks overlap, that isn't a bad thing at all. Don't worry about that. This is going to make all of the water look brighter, just via contrast. This one's kind of neat. It moves up and then out and then comes back on a bit of a slide. Again, we look for this distinctive ones first. 
And as you get farther back, you're probably going to want to make your pigment less dark, but recognize that you don't have to. You can just go over those layers later on to something a little bit brighter. There are a lot of rocks in this water. If you're working on a much larger canvas, you will have a lot more opportunity to really incorporate them. But I really love this size of canvas because it makes blending large areas like the sky and the sand not wildly difficult while still giving you quite a bit of room for detail. It's this beautiful, beautiful balance that it offers. Starting to deviate from the reference photo with the amount of rocks and their spacing. Put this one out here, getting lost in a wave. I'll blend the bottom of it to be a bit softer, where that's quite hard. There we go. And I'm apparently back to already looking at the photo. It's just so useful. Just know where everything needs to go. To look natural. And definitely incorporate more of these in the foreground. And then there are little dots and specks and little lines in the sand. Just doing a bit of a tap. Still have a lot to do with the rocks, but this is a good pigment to kind of deliver some extra detail throughout here. Definitely gives it more of a natural look. And I almost have no paint on my brush, a lot of it's water. I don't want to do too much of this in the background though, because it very much is a, a detail, and you don't want to draw the viewer's attention through detail into the background of a landscape like this. You want to preserve the majority of that texture and detail for the foreground. So I'm doing a lot of it right up close to us and then it dissipates as it gets farther back. There we go. Now I'm going to take a little bit of water. Might do a slight blend. You don't have to do this. But I like it. So, so far so good. Still waiting for all of those rocks to dry while we do. I think I might take a little bit more yellow, cadmium red light hue, titanium white. Make a really beautiful bright pigment here. Work that in and around some of our rocks. Give the bottom edges a nice sharp line. You can see how the color really changes from a yellow to more of a pink, and then you have this orange. We started with a flat layer, one pigment, and then we build on it. Very good. I'm also going to look at that color right there. Say, so, you know what, let's do, let's do a little bit more. Blue red, white, a little bit of black. Test it. Perfect. And we can build some extra highlight on the sand as well. This will simplify some of that detail you just applied onto it, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. You can always go back and add more. 
So many little touch-ups and additions we can do throughout this. There we go. But with that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let all of our rocks dry. I'll head in with a second layer and then we will paint some detail and make them three-dimensional together. So before we proceed into the detail in the rocks, I did want to give you yet another slightly farther away shot just so you could see how many rocks we have, the proximity that they are kind of to one another, and yeah. So with that, let's now get into the details. Now, this is only really going to be prominent on the larger rocks that we have in the foreground because the farther away they get, the harder it is to see these sorts of things. But we are going to go into this with the smaller round pointed brush. I'm going to grab some of our primary red, a little bit of our primary blue. We will mix up a nice purple here. Very similar to what we already have on the palette, something that's close to this actually will do us quite well. This, as you can see, it's quite bright. So we'll get some extra Mars black. Work that in there. And it's definitely close, but I think we want slightly darker. Maybe a little bit more red. We'll do a slight test down here. Worked out very well. So now let's start working into our rocks. Now I'm going to look for the defining edges, kind of the tops of the rocks, the areas that are going to get the most light because the light is coming this way. It's going to reflect off that edge, work its way around the top and back. So when I go to my photo, I can see that there is a rock edge here. Kind of comes up like this. I'm essentially sketching with very wet paint. There's a lot of water on my brush right now. I'm not looking for a fantastic coverage. I'm not looking for a very opaque application right now. I'm just looking to draw. So it's okay to have a lot of water there. So I marked the top edge. I'll mark the right side because it is going to have light coming down on it. And then the rock has this very interesting exterior that kind of has lots of little divots. So I kind of take the line on the outskirts and I come in with it. I start making it horizontal at some point. But I'm leaving all of these little openings. And the more I go over different areas, the brighter they get. Because we're building highlight on top of highlight rather than highlight on top of darker shadow. And for the most part, I want the areas to the right to be the brightest because they're facing this way. I'm going to get some more water, a little bit more paint, and I'll say, okay, you know what? This rock's good for now. We'll probably, we'll probably want to drag it down a little bit more, actually. There we go. We have some extra details. Generally, when painting rocks, it's best not to think about painting rocks. It's best to think about mark making and just kind of the movements that they have and then the areas that they're going to be light. And I try to do it almost in an abstract way. I use the reference photo to get the right idea, but then there's lots of little taps and drags and it's more so about just capturing little highlighted surfaces than it is actually rendering the technique of rock. You can see just how quickly these come along and I'm just thinking, okay, you know what, if there's a bit of a wall and edge, the right hand side of it is going to be bright, the edge that's kind of facing the light is going to be bright, and then this back area, it's going to have shadow, as is kind of the left hand side of any protruding area. And through continuously kind of incorporating those ideas, we're able to render something very natural looking. See that? Just letting it dissipate as we come this way. There we go. 
So here we are right up close and we'll remix some color. So again, I like to start with some blue and red. I am choosing the cooler red, the primary red, some Mars black and some titanium white. And we know we want to essentially get the color that we have to the edges, but this time I want it to be slightly brighter and slightly more saturated. Something with a bit more of a pop. So that should do it. I just mixed my paint though, so I have a lot of pigment on my brush as you can see, and rendering a sharp edge with this would be very difficult. We just have too much paint. So I'm actually going to take off that paint in the water, condense all of the bristles with the water, then I'll grab some of it just with the very tip of the brush, and then I'll come to the edges and I'll layer on those highlights. And I'll have it dissipate as we go farther down and towards the back. You can see all of the little edges that we've created. We can kind of condense areas to simplify portions of the rock if we want. Don't think I want to do too, too much with the highlights. I really like the way it currently looks. This is just to give it a bit more of that reflective quality. Because hypothetically, these are a little bit wet. With that said, we are getting pretty far into the painting lesson. It's uh, now about 10 o'clock at night. I've been painting and doing little preps, testing colors, all of that today. And I'd just like to take a minute to say a big thank you to everyone here watching the video, being a part of the community, making this kind of what I get to do day by day, teach art, make paintings. It's pretty wonderful. And it only happens because of your support, because you tune in to the new videos, because you are a part of the community. And I'd also like to say a massive thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel up over on Patreon, helping us out directly, and really allowing for these lessons to happen because if it wasn't for you guys, in no, in no way, in no world would I be able to put as much time into these as I do. So thank you for making this happen. Thank you for allowing me to make these lessons, put them on YouTube so everybody who can't afford formal art training, can watch them and learn as well. It all happens, honestly, because of you and your support. So thank you for letting me teach art for a living. Thank you for providing these lessons for everyone. Thank you for just being supportive. I hope that you enjoy the traceables and the reference photos and all of the perks up there. I uh, talk about this in, I think, all of the videos, but if you are interested, in acrylic painting and you are fairly new, up there on Patreon I do have my ebook, Acrylics for Beginners. It's essentially the essentials, everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into it. In it we talk about composition, color, matching, blending, how to use water, what brushes to use, glazing, really all of it. And I also have a number of other books full of traceables for those uninspired days where you really want to paint something, but you just don't know what to do. We have landscapes, flowers, lots of different fun things. And we also have a Facebook group where everybody kind of posts their work, shares ideas, talks about different lessons. So if you're interested, all of that is up available over on Patreon. But again, to everybody who is already up there, big thank you for being there. And to everyone who, you know, can't afford it right now and is just watching at home, thank you too for just being here. It means a lot that so many of you tune in, spend your time being creative, being productive, making things here with me. It's pretty amazing. So thank you to just about everyone watching at this point. But with that said, I am getting very, very happy with these rocks. I don't think we need to do too much more with them. And so, I think we're going to pull the camera back 
and we'll start working on the larger rocks to the right hand side of the screen. We'll do that in one second. Just, just want to clean that one up. <laughs> do you ever find when you're painting and someone asks, uh, oh, can we, can we go do this? Can I do that? And then it, all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, yeah, of course. 100% we can go and do that. And, and then it's one more thing, one more thing. And there's just there's always one more little thing to fix with painting. Same way when I'm kind of switching from area to area. It's, oh, we should switch to that. Oh, but you know what? I could, I could touch that up. We can make that look a little bit better, a little bit cleaner. Just touching up some of these rocks here. Maybe adding new ones. <laughs> this is exactly what I mean. Anyways, I won't have to go back and add some extra layers to this to make these nice and thick, but with that, we are going to pull the camera back and start working on the larger rocks and cliffs to the right-hand side of the screen next. So we moved the camera back a little bit, set everything up, and then I realized, you know what, there's one more technique I really want to incorporate in here before we move on, and that is going to be done with that same small round pointed brush. We're going to grab a little bit of our yellow, orange, titanium white. Mix up nice bright pigment here. Make it a little bit more pink maybe. Test it in our water, make sure that it's cohesive. Good. I'm going to take off the extra because I want to make some very fine markings and the mixed pigment on my brush would have been a little bit too much. And we're going to say, okay, you know, we have all of this beautiful water. How about a little pool of it over here? around this rock. How about a little bit over here? There's very minor amounts that are in other areas, little divots in the ground. It's going to add just one more beautiful little detail to an area that's becoming quite complex. There we go. Kind of working it out around some of these rocks. I might go back and make this color a little bit more complex later on, but for now I'm just plotting some areas, making it wet. Definitely adds a lot to the piece. Highly recommend going back and doing this. Going over some of these areas a couple of times because they are relatively thin. And while that is okay in portions, I don't want any of the yellow over blue and kind of optically creating green. That's something we worked very hard to avoid all painting. And we're not going to let a couple transparent layers do that to us now. Oh, that's wonderful though. I like that. I might do more a little bit later but I don't want to overdo it, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. With that, now switching to the one inch flat headed brush, grabbing quite a lot of Mars Black, a little bit of our ultramarine blue, some of our primary red, the cool red, hint of titanium white, a little bit more, And now I'm going to work on this rock structure right here. Again, we're using this brush because it can cover so much surface area very quickly, very efficiently, and render some really sharp lines, which is something we definitely want here. We went back and added extra titanium white to this, by the way, because we want these to progressively get darker as we move closer to us and therefore more to the right. I may even go back and brighten this with a secondary layer. There we go. It's definitely going to need a secondary layer, as is.
but I like the shape in general. So we'll grab a bit more water, a bit more Mars black, red, white, well, blue, a <laughs> little bit of white, less white this time. We're moving closer to us. Always marking my edges first, creating some little protruding pieces, make it interesting. And there may not be enough of a difference darkness wise to really discern between these two. This one's a little bit more red than the last, so I can tell that there's a difference. But that's not how you want to tell the difference. So in my secondary layer, I'm going to make a note to make this darker than this. And we'll probably do that by making this actually darker and that actually brighter. We'll probably change both of them minorly. You can see just how quick and easy all of this paint is going on, which is wonderful. And now, I definitely need more paint on my brush before I tackle this one. So, I'm going to get that, and then we'll jump back into it. So, here we are, a little bit farther back yet again. I have plenty of additional Mars Black here for my palette. We'll grab that, we'll grab our primary red, or blue. And remember, we're getting closer to us in the foreground, so I'm going to start using more blue than I do red, just like we did in the bottom area. Now, normally I clean off my brush after mixing so that I can create some very clean applications. And normally I start on the edges of subjects, but I had a lot of paint on my brush and it was going to be very useful in the body of this rock right here. So this is actually where I'm starting. It's unconventional, we're breaking the rules, but it's important to know that in acrylic painting, you can break the rules. It's a creative process, you can have fun with it, you can make it your own, you can change orders and blends and mixes. Just because I'm suggesting things doesn't mean you need to do them exactly how I tell you. You can have fun with it. You can, you know, again, just break the rules and really enjoy the process. I think that's what's most important kind of through this. You can make these paintings your own. You can do a lot. Also, I get a, a lot of questions regarding if people can sell the paintings that I do here on the channel. And my answer has always been, check with the artist before you try to sell uh, a piece based off their tutorial or their work, because kind of we all have different um, thoughts about it and different kind of guidelines and things. But I personally am 100% okay, if not very happy with the idea of you selling your pieces based off my 10 minute lessons or these hour long acrylic lessons. I don't really like it when people sell work based off my oil lessons, but I have very, very few of those on the channel. But all of these acrylic seascapes, please feel more than welcome to do that. You put a lot of time and effort, thought, work into these. And I would love it if you could make some money, maybe start an art career, do all of those really wonderful, fun things. So please, please feel welcome to. Don't worry about it. I am I'm here to help you in your art journey. And that kind of extends past learning techniques and that sort of thing. If somebody can kind of start building a portfolio and a, a collection of work, based off my tutorials and start selling them. I think that is an amazing thing. And I love that. I love that for all of you. So <laughs> for, for the questions that were inevitably going to be in the comment section, there, there you go. Yeah, please feel free to work and sell any of the acrylic lessons. With that, this all needs to dry. And then I'm going to go back in, progressively make that a little bit brighter than that, and that a little bit brighter than that, and then we'll go in and we'll add some details like we do there. So I'm going to wait five, maybe 10 minutes for that to dry. I want it to dry well. And then together, we'll go back in and start doing some extra detail.
So, it's about 15 minutes later. I did let that dry. I went in with a secondary layer, kind of fixed how dark to light things are. And now we're at the point where we are ready for the details. And for the details, I'm going to be using, yet again, that small, round, pointed brush. It's just so versatile. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and damp, and we're going to mix up a bit of a highlight for this, but it's important to recognize that this is all very much cast in shadow. It's on the opposite side of where the light is kind of facing, and so the highlights here are actually going to be quite dark. They're just going to be highlights relative to this space right here. So with that, we know that we're going to need some of our cool red, some of our ultramarine blue, we need a hint of titanium white, and some Mars black. Now our highlight is going to change depending upon which rock we are currently working on. I'm going to start at the one closest to us. So this should be bright relative to what we have going on here. And as you can see right there, it is. This is actually great. This is just what we wanted. So I'm applying this to my edges initially. And then I see little movements like this. I say, okay, you know what? The rock's moving inwards right there. So we'll move that. And then there might be another protruding piece of rock that kind of comes out there. And it can kind of come down here and dissipate. Maybe we'll do a bit of a blend back. This is the kind of thing that you don't really want the viewer to notice as soon as they look at the painting. But when they've looked at it for quite some time, they start to realize, oh, there's detail in there. There are little highlights. That's three-dimensional. It's not just a silhouette. And it keeps the intrigue there for a much longer period of time. But again, the goal, above all, is just to keep it so, so subtle. We will brighten it a hint. So add a little bit of titanium white to that. And as we get lower, we can let it dissipate. So it's not actually bright. And if we find we want it to be a bit darker once we're kind of done, we can always go back in with a bit of a darker glaze. So don't fear kind of doing too much. If anything, this is the easiest area of the painting to kind of go back and correct. But I'm just trying to create interesting little markings and movements for the rock, recognizing that every application I make is a highlighted edge. And that light is either going to wrap around it or it's going to hit a hard stop. And that's just where the light's going to end. Now we can probably use this on the next one as well. It still shows up, which is good. I'm working it around the edge because that's where the light is going to wrap itself around. Again, nothing's too prominent. You can also see that I'm currently holding my brush like a pencil. You don't have to do that. This is also something you could paint from a bit of a distance to get a very natural flow for your rocks. And I'll do the next little bit like that just to illustrate for you any differences you may see in technique and the final rendering. I'm definitely getting longer strokes through this. And it's definitely adding more so to flow and movement than it is individually tapped texture and detail, which actually isn't a bad thing as we move farther back because we want these to be less and less detailed the farther back we go. So maybe this first one you want to hold the brush like a pencil, but the second one, you move your hand back. It'll be a little strange when you start, but a couple paintings in, you will get the hang of it and it'll be a great additional technique you can incorporate into your work.
Now this next one, we need to make it a little bit brighter because we are making the actual rock brighter. And I'll add a little bit of red because we are getting into that warmer area. Not going to do too much here because it's far away. You won't actually see that much detail. This might be a little bit too bright. It's important to be honest with yourself about that. Again, it is an easy area to fix. I don't think I'm going to know until I take five or six steps back and kind of finish it. I also get a commonly asked question, and that's how do you know when your painting's finished? And generally what I like to do is slightly overdo my painting. I like to kind of answer all my questions of, do I want more here? Do I want more there? What if that was brighter? What if that was darker? I go through those motions and then I, I look at the painting and I say, okay, is it now too much? And if it is too much, then I just kind of walk it back and I put things back to the way they were. I simplify, but if I do like it, then I essentially bring the painting to as detailed and as highlighted and as extreme measures as I like. And I say, okay, you know what? That's what I want because I brought it there, right? I, I didn't have anything to question later on. And that's how I like to approach the paintings. It means that there are almost always things I have to go back over and change. But I think it makes me a much better painter because I actually get to try these things out. And then when I go back and change things, I have to find the old colors. I have to go back to my old mixes. I have to go back to my old applications. It's a lot of reinforcing the memory and those techniques. So I, I think it's actually really, really beneficial. And that's how I personally go about it. Here you can see I'm just adding lots of little texture and detail to these rocks. That's, oh, that's really lovely. I love that. Might add a little bit more now to the foreground. I am so pleased with this painting. I feel like we also didn't have too many rough stages. We definitely had them because they are in pretty much every painting, but I feel like they didn't last for very long. We worked through them quickly. Just such a, such a good experience. I hope that you are also just really enjoying having a lot of fun. And if you like to watch these before you actually go ahead and paint, I know a lot of people do that. I hope you're very much looking forward to it. Such a wonderful, wonderful little painting here. Here you can see I'm just doing a little bit of a tap and drag for extra texture with a slightly brighter color and value. I know my brush is kind of going off the screen here, but we're essentially just doing more of that same uh, texture application that we've been doing. With that said, I think it's time to take a step back and see what it's looking like. So after stepping back, we can finally see really what we've been able to render after a very, very full day of painting. And I have to say, this one really did turn out to be one of my absolute favorites. I love the color palettes. I love the little reflections, the subtle details in the rock. I just, I feel like it all came together and I am so, so pleased with this. I've been craving a trip to the beach. It's finally getting quite warm here. And this really brought me there in a way. It was really, really special. But thank you for stopping by. I really hope you feel like you learned something. I hope you feel inspired and ready to go out and create your own piece. And remember, this is the creative process. You can do with this lesson what you'd like. If you'd like to add people or more rocks or less rocks or an entirely different type of cloud, please feel welcome to do that. Take artistic liberties, have fun with it, make it your own, and just really enjoy the creative process. 
And again, thank you, thank you for being here. I'd also like to say a big thank you to everyone up over on Patreon who is directly supporting the channel, who does make these lessons actually happen, who do provide me with the opportunity to spend my days creating these things. Thank you to you for just, again, letting things like this come to fruition and uh, kind of exist. And I'm sure everybody at home uh, is also very, very grateful for it as well. So thank you from me. Thank you from everybody else who is watching this. You make this happen. And to everybody who is new to the channel, you're just stopping by, you made it to the end of the lesson. Thank you for being here, for you know really joining the community. And if you would like to support the channel up on Patreon, there's a link to that in the video description. Up there, you can get the traceable, the reference photo. I did use the reference photo a lot in this lesson for quite a bit of color matching, just making sure that we had all of those right mixes. But you can also get access to all of the bonus episodes, our exclusive Facebook group where everybody kind of shares the work, talks about it, helps each other out, and of course all of my ebooks including acrylics for beginners and all of the traceables. With that said though, thank you so much for stopping by. This one was a real pleasure and it just it has me excited to do another painting. So I will see you very soon with a brand new painting lesson and until then, stay creative. Thank you.